And now here's the first goal of the game, kicked by Essendon's champion full forward, John Coleman. He was football shooting star. With 10 goals in his first game and 100 in his first season, John Coleman became a magnet for the crowds. And of those lucky enough to be teammates, like sentiment Alan Dale, pictured here with Coleman and Bill Hutchison, none ever equaled Coleman. I think really that uh, we were blessed to play with him. He was such a, a brilliant player. Well, he was a great mark, and I'm quite sure, a great mark and a magnificent kick, and he was fast. And I'm quite sure had Coleman played centre half back or any other position, he would have been a star. I mean, you could jump over that roof. Just thrilling. Absolutely thrilling to see him rise in the pack and go way above them. I don't think I've seen one better than him. I know, you know, Ablett and those players today, the Lockets, but John Coleman was. Um, such a magnificent player. If Gary Ablett's good and you think Coleman's better, how do you paint a picture of that? And so the stage is set. Just on 100,000 people are ready to witness the 1950 grand final. So big is the crowd, they're on the oval. They're sandwiched between the fence and the boundary line. Like Pratt before him and Hudson a generation later, Coleman made the turnstiles click. With his movie star looks and business brain, you can't help thinking he was born 30 years too early. The ground would only hold about 28,000, and there'd always be 35,000 in the ground packed. And Coley had a following that'd be about 5,000 behind the goals crammed. And playing in the centre, at quarter time, you think, what's going on? the whole 5,000 would move from one end. You'd think there was a fight going around the other end. Then at halftime, back they'd go again. Essendon featured in every grand final from 46 to 51, with Dick Reynolds coaching the club for 22 marvellous years. And congratulations on winning the 1948 Premiership. And I'm much pleasure now calling upon my captain and coach, go, one of the finest sports in the game, Dickie Reynolds. <laughs> Opposing teams were blighted by Coleman fever, especially the way Reynolds and Hutchison fed him. Defenders tried everything to stop his prodigious leap, even converging on him in packs of four. But each time he dug himself out of the ground. Essendon won flags in 49 and 50, but the continual harassment tormented Coleman to breaking point. John was the sort of bloke that wouldn't cop it, he had handed out as well, you know, he, he didn't just take it. He was an ideal footballer, but he was a tough footballer. He, you know, he wasn't a fellow that you could really rough up, Coley, because he could give it back. He had a very fiery temperament, and perhaps that was uh, his Achilles heel if, uh, if he did have one, because he was a courageous player, and if you sort of got in little uh, rough ups with him, he wouldn't back away. In the final round of 1951, with Essendon rolling towards a hat-trick of premierships, Coleman was reported for retaliating against Carlton fullback Harry Casper. And at half-time, he came in and threw his jumper off. He got stripped and he's putting his clothes on. He said, I won't play again. That bastard grabbed me down below. He said, I'm finished. I had his head down and head between his knees and head down, and I said, no, he says, Bugger. he said, I'm going home. He said, well, mugs like that do that to me, and he said, they report me for it. And I, I just gave him the general talk and got him out there again. He went out and he played on Ollie Grieve, one of the greatest fullbacks of all time. He kicked five goals in the next five minutes. The tribunal suspended Coleman for four matches. He was devastated. So, while Coleman watched from the press box, Essendon lost the grand final to Geelong by 11 points. But I think if he uh, had played in the 51 grand final against Geelong, I think the result may have been different. In the eighth round of 1954, a week after kicking 14 goals against Fitzroy, Coleman fell awkwardly. 
dislocated his knee and never played again. As a footballer, that's the last we saw of him. Finished at 25. Kicked 540 goals, near as Demet. Played only 98 games. Finished at 25. A tragedy. I don't think we ever really saw the best of him, but he was a sensational mark, incredibly quick player, and uh, a reasonably accurate kick for goal. He made one attempt to come back, but even when he was kicking in the park with the kids, he could only use his left foot. In 1961, Coleman replaced Reynolds as coach, winning premierships in 62 and 65. One of the few great players of, few, of an enormous natural ability that was able to coach a premiership side. Very few great natural ability players have become great coaches. Well, uh, to all you boys, I don't know whether you can hear me or not, but how would you live against these boys playing today? First of you, John Coleman. How would I what, Lou? How would you go against these fellas playing today? Wouldn't get a kick. And he was a great athlete, great player, wonderful coach, and it's most unfortunate that he's, uh, his passing was so untimely, really. John Coleman was only 44 when he died suddenly in 1973. His life, like his football career, was tragically brief. <laughs>